Here's something terrifying. Right now, your brain is rewriting your memories. Not metaphorically, literally. And the scariest part? You have no idea it's happening. Every single memory you have has been edited, distorted, and reconstructed by your own mind. Your brain is gaslighting you, and I have the research to prove it. The problem. Think about your most vivid memory. Maybe it's your wedding day, your first kiss, or a childhood vacation. You can see it clearly, right? The colors, the sounds, the emotions. You're absolutely certain it happened exactly the way you remember it. Here's the problem. That confidence is completely misplaced. Scientists have discovered that our memories aren't like video recordings we can replay. They're more like Wikipedia pages that anyone can edit, except the editor is your own brain, and it's making changes without asking permission. We walk around completely convinced our memories are accurate, when in reality, we're all living with false memories we can't distinguish from real ones. And it gets worse. Your brain isn't just changing old memories, it's creating entirely new ones that never happened at all. The experiment. In 1974, Dr. Elizabeth Loftus at the University of Washington conducted an experiment that would change everything we thought we knew about memory. She showed 45 college students videos of car accidents, then asked them a simple question. How fast were the cars going when they hit each other? But here's the twist. She didn't ask everyone the same question. Some students were asked how fast the cars were going when they smashed into each other. Others heard collided, some heard bumped, and others heard contacted. Same accident, same video. Just one word changed. The results were shocking. Students who heard the word smashed estimated speeds of 41 miles per hour. Those who heard contacted said 32 miles per hour. That's a nine mile per hour difference from changing a single word. But Loftus wasn't done. A week later, she brought the students back and asked if they remembered seeing broken glass in the accident. Here's the thing. There was no broken glass in the video. None. But 32% of students who heard smashed reported seeing it. Only 12% of the other groups did. One word had created a completely false memory in nearly a third of participants, and they were absolutely convinced they had seen it. The science. So what's actually happening in your brain? When you experience something, your brain doesn't create a perfect copy and file it away. Instead, it breaks the experience into fragments and stores them across different brain regions. Visual information goes here, emotional context goes there, the sequence of events gets filed somewhere else entirely. When you try to remember something, your brain has to reconstruct the entire experience from these scattered pieces. And here's where the gaslighting begins. Every time you recall a memory, you're not accessing the original experience. You're accessing the last time you remembered it. Think about that. You're remembering the memory of the memory. And each time you do this, your current emotions, beliefs, and even random suggestions from other people can contaminate the reconstruction. Dr. Loftus calls this the misinformation effect. Post-event information doesn't just influence what you think happened. It literally rewrites the memory itself. Your hippocampus and prefrontal cortex work together to create what feels like a seamless movie. But they're actually just improvising, filling in gaps with whatever seems plausible. And because this happens automatically and unconsciously, you can't tell the difference between a real memory and a fabricated one. Your confidence in a memory has absolutely nothing to do with its accuracy. Deeper dive. But can your brain really create memories of events that never happened? In 1995, Dr. Loftus conducted another experiment that pushed the boundaries even further. She told 24 adult stories about their childhood with help from their family members. Three stories were real. One was completely fabricated. The fake story, being lost in a shopping mall around age five, feeling frightened and being rescued by an elderly person. One week later, she interviewed them again. 25% of participants now had clear memories of being lost in the mall. Not just vague feelings, detailed, vivid memories. 
They described the rescuer's appearance, their emotional state, what the mall looked like. They added information that Loftus never suggested, and they were absolutely certain it happened. This has been replicated dozens of times. Researchers have successfully implanted false memories of witnessing demonic possession, being attacked by animals, even getting sick from certain foods. And here's the kicker. Those false food memories actually changed behavior. Participants avoided those foods afterward. A memory that never happened influenced real-world decisions. Now let's talk about something even stranger. You know how some experiences feel longer or shorter than they actually were? There's a reason for that, and it reveals another way your brain manipulates you. Dr. Daniel Kahneman from Princeton University won a Nobel Prize for discovering something profound. You're not one person, you're two. He calls them the experiencing self and the remembering self. Your experiencing self lives in the present moment, lasting about three seconds at a time. Your remembering self is a storyteller that only cares about peaks and endings. In a famous study, Kahneman had patients undergo colonoscopies. One group had a standard procedure. The other group had a longer procedure with an extended period of reduced discomfort at the end. Which group had a better memory of the experience? The one with the longer, technically more painful procedure, because it ended better. Patients with better endings rated the overall experience as less painful, despite experiencing 10% more total pain. They were also 10% more willing to return for follow-up procedures. Your remembering self completely ignored duration. It only cared about the peak moment and how it ended. This is called duration neglect. Your brain literally doesn't count how long you suffered. It just asks, how bad was the worst part and how did it end? Real world application. So what does all this mean for your actual life? First, eyewitness testimony. It's considered powerful evidence in court, but it's based on the same reconstructive memory process we've been talking about. Dr. Loftus has testified in over 300 trials because of this research. Studies show that eyewitness identification is the leading cause of wrongful convictions. Under high stress, which obviously happens during crimes, false identification rates can reach 67%. Think about that. More than half of identifications under stress could be wrong. Second, your relationships. How many arguments have you had that started with, that's not what happened, or you're remembering it wrong? Here's the uncomfortable truth. You might both be wrong. Your brain reconstructs past conversations and events based on your current emotional state. If you're angry at someone, your brain literally edits memories to make them seem worse. If you're in love, it smooths over the rough patches. The relationship you remember having six months ago might be completely different from the relationship you actually had. Third, life satisfaction. Remember Kahneman's peak end rule? We design our entire lives around creating good memories, not good experiences. You take a vacation and spend half the time thinking about Instagram photos instead of enjoying the moment. You stay in situations that make you miserable daily because you're hoping for a good ending. You make career choices based on how they'll look on your resume rather than how they'll feel day to day. We sacrifice the experiencing self for the remembering self. And fourth, personal growth. If you can't trust your memories, how do you learn from past mistakes? Every time you recall a failure or success, you're potentially reinforcing a distorted version. Your brain might be teaching you the wrong lessons because it changed the story to fit your current beliefs. The challenge. Here's what you can do about it. First, document important events in real time. Write down what happened while it's fresh before your remembering self gets a chance to edit it. Use voice memos, journal entries, or quick notes on your phone. This creates an external record your brain can't manipulate. Second, question your confidence. The next time you're absolutely certain you're right about a memory, pause. Research shows confidence and accuracy aren't correlated. The memories you're most sure about might be the most distorted. Ask others what they remember. Not to prove you're right, but to triangulate different perspectives. Third, be aware of your current emotional state when recalling the past. 
Are you angry? Sad? Euphoric? Your brain is filtering memories through that lens right now. If you're furious at someone, your brain is probably serving up their worst moments. If you're grateful, you're getting the highlight reel. Recognize the bias. Fourth, when making decisions, focus on the experiencing self. Don't just think about how you'll remember something. Think about how you'll actually experience it day to day. That beach vacation might create great Instagram moments, but will the travel stress, crowds and sunburn make the actual experience miserable? That prestigious job might look good on paper, but will you hate every morning? And here's my challenge for you. For the next week, write down one vivid memory each day. Describe it in detail. Then, if possible, verify it with someone else who was there or check photos, messages or other records. I guarantee you'll find discrepancies. Share what you discover in the comments. I'm genuinely curious how many of you will find that your memories have been edited without your knowledge. There's something both terrifying and liberating about all of this. Terrifying because it means we can never fully trust our own minds. Every argument you've won based on, I remember it clearly, might have been built on fiction. Every grudge you've held, every nostalgic moment you've cherished, every lesson you've learned from experience, all of it filtered through a brain that rewrites history to fit its current narrative. But here's the liberating part. If your brain is constantly reconstructing the past, that means your past isn't fixed. You're not trapped by your memories because those memories are already fiction, at least partially. The painful experiences you've been carrying around. Your brain has probably already modified them. The person you think you were? That's a story your remembering self wrote, and it can write a different story. Understanding that your brain gaslights you doesn't mean you should distrust everything. It means you should hold your memories a little more loosely. Be more forgiving of others who remember things differently. They're not necessarily lying. Their brain just edited the story differently than yours did. Be more present in actual experiences rather than just collecting memories. And be more intentional about which memories you want to reinforce. Because every time you recall something, you're strengthening that version of events, whether it's accurate or not. Your brain is gaslighting you, but now you know. And knowing is the first step to taking back control of your own story. If this video changed how you think about memory, drop a comment sharing a time when you discovered a memory was wrong. And if you want to dive deeper into the science of how your brain really works, check out the next video in this playlist. Your brain has more tricks up its sleeve than you could possibly imagine. I'm going to keep exposing them. Thanks for watching Think Lent, where we think like scientists to understand what makes us human.